Chapter 1. Out of the Stable Because in Stable 2, no pony ever enters, and no pony ever leaves. Gray. The walls of the maintenance stalls were all a very monotonous, dull gray. The particular wall I was staring at had the merit of being a very clean gray. Pitbucks were notoriously hardy and reliable, so being a stable's pitbuck technician that there were usually long periods of nothing to do. Being the pitbuck technician's apprentice meant that I was assigned all the mundane daily chores while my trainer took extended naps in the back room. Chores like cleaning the walls. This wall needs a mural. I let myself fantasize, picturing the overmare agreeing and ordering Pallet herself to turn our entire stall into one of her brightly painted masterpieces. Pallet was the greatest painter in Stable 2, and like every skilled artist, that made her a stable treasure. Life in Stable 2 inevitably began to eat at your spirit. You were born in the stable, you lived your whole life in the stable, you were going to die there, and the course of your life was largely laid out for you to see by your cutie mark party. So the Overmare insisted that a new song be added to the stable's broadcast repertoire each week. That meant public areas that were brightly painted and adorned with uplifting and motivational murals, that regular parties were planned in the atrium, all in an effort to distract and stave off depression. Reality came crashing back as I stared at the eternally blank gray, Beautifying maintenance areas was tragically low in priority already, and the pitbuck technician stall was one of the least trafficked parts of maintenance. I felt my ears droop as I started to realize I'd be staring at the same gray wall nearly every day for the rest of my life. Oh dear, is it really that bad? And there she was, Velvet Remedy, the gorgeous charcoal-coated unicorn with streaks of color in her white mane, and with a voice as smooth as silk and rich as the finest chocolate, was standing in the doorway of my stall. I felt immediately grateful that I'd finished the cleaning and simultaneously ashamed that the room was so beneath her. I couldn't believe she was standing there. I'd seen her on the stage above us at late parties. I'd listened to her songs incessantly, recording every new one of my pit bucks so I didn't have to wait to hear it again. I'll admit it now. I'd had a crush on Velvet Remedy for years. I Made mean, at least three hundred other ponies. My mother used to laugh at that. Little Piff, she would say, twirling with her friends. Velvet Remedy's barn door doesn't swing that way. It took me a couple of years to understand what my mother had meant by that. It took me several seconds to process if Velvet Remedy had actually asked me something. Well, what? Wonderful response, little Pip. So elegant. I wanted to dig my way through the concrete floor and pull the chunks over top of me. She smiled sweetly. She smiled at me. In that amazing voice. You looked so heartbroken when I came in. Is there anything I can do? Velvet Remedy offered to help me. I was shocked back to my senses. Velvet Remedy must have some reason for being down here. Some pitbuck reason. It wasn't like she would just go wandering around maintenance after all. Looking around, I realized that I was the only pony on duty. My teacher was, as usual, asleep in his office. Oh, oh, no, it was nothing. I tried to regain composure. How may I be of assistance? Velvet Remedy's expression was both compassionate and unconvinced, but she lifted a forehoof, raising her pitbuck to my gaze. A more elegant model than mine, with her initials in cutie mark, a beautiful bird with wings outstretched and beak open in song, embellishing it tastefully. I hate to be a bother, but it's beyond a chafe. Could you replace the padding? Oh, absolutely. I was already levitating the special keys used to unlock a pit boy from a pony's foreleg. As an apprentice pit buck technician, I had all the manner of special precision tools in my pockets of my utility barding. I'll have it done right quick. The pit buck came off with a click. Velvet Remedy chuckled hesitantly, lowering her hoof. Oh no, that's all right. Take your time. I'm going to put some salve on this leg back in my room and rest it up for the afternoon. That's right. Velvet Remedy was performing at the Stable 2 Saloon tomorrow night. I would have to polish it up and make it worthy of being worn above her hoof. If I spent all night on it, I could give it a full tune-up, have it running as smoothly as the day she got it, and still have it back to her before or so. All right, I'll have it back to you by this time tomorrow. You won't be disappointed. I promise. She smiled at me again, and all the gray in the world couldn't darken my day. Thank you. And then she turned to go. I watched as her cutie mark disappeared around the doorway. Then she was gone. The next day I was whistling one of Velvet Remedy's songs as I walked down the halls toward her room. Turning the corner, I was started out of my reverie by a mass of ponies gathered outside Velvet Remedy's room. Damn! I was going to have to battle my way through the hoofprint seekers and paparazzi. Levitating the pitbuck higher, I started to shove my way into the crowd. She's gone! How could she leave? The hushed ponies and panicked whinnies around me grew alarming. 
Why would she abandon us? Gone? Velvet Remedy was... Gone? And then the words that stopped me cold. I don't think the stable door ever could open. She was gone outside? Don't worry, every pony, boomed the voice of the overmare from somewhere in the crowd. I have the tag of each and every pony in the stable. I will personally send out a rescue party. We'll have our velvet back by the end of the day. Worry not. I felt I was drowning in cold, wet cement. My gaze slowly moved up towards the pit buck floating above me. I lowered my head, slowly trying to back out of the crowd, curling the floating pit buck close. When the overmare brought up Velvet Remedy's tag, it would lead every pony not to Velvet, but to a pit buck sitting in the maintenance. With a thump, I backed into some pony, startling me enough that the levitation field evaporated, and poof, the clean and shiny pit buck clattered to the floor. Turning, I found myself eye to eye with the overmare. She didn't speak, her gaze turning to the pit buck on the ground. Velvet Remedy's initials and cutie mark clearly visible. What is this? The Overmare spoke slowly and dangerously. All eyes turned to me. I could feel every pair of eyes. Nobody spoke. The silence bore down like a lead blanket. My mouth went dry. I couldn't find my voice. I didn't need to. I could feel the wave of loathing. Dozens of Velvet Remedy's fan ponies, and I was the pony holding the reason why their idol was lost to them. The Overmare's voice was low and surprisingly gentle. Take it to your room, swiftly. She didn't need to tell me twice. I lay on my bed that evening, poking at Velvet Remedy's pit buck as the radio in my own played yet another reiteration of the tragedy of the day. I couldn't believe it. Velvet Remedy was gone. I couldn't understand. How could she leave? Why would she go? The door out of Stable 2 was closed and sealed, but... A ghost story some pony told me at my first and only slumber party had given me horrible nightmares and still lurked in the shadows of my head. A tale of a pony who somehow got the stable door open and stepped outside, only to find that there was no outside. Just a great nothingness that whisked the pony away, devouring her soul that she was nothingness too. Empirically, I knew that wasn't the case, but the mental image still haunted me. The two things I did understand was that Velvet Remedy had gotten me to remove her pit buck so the Overmare couldn't track her with it, and that I was screwed. Being the smallest pony my age, and the last to get my cutie mark, I did not facilitate building friendships with my peer ponies. Mother honestly didn't help either, nor did waking up screaming at my first slumber party. So I was used to being alone, but I'd never had enemies before. I'd been beneath the notice of other ponies, but I'd never had one hate me. I really couldn't blame them either even though it totally wasn't fair. They were upset and hurt and needed a scapegoat. The news hadn't mentioned me by name yet, just Velvet Remedy's custom-decorated pit buck was found in the possession of a pit buck technician pony. But with a whole two of us, it wasn't hard for every pony to figure out, even with the scene outside her room earlier. The Overmer was speaking on the radio. We are all feeling this loss, but I want to remind every pony that Velvet Remedy chose to do this. She chose to leave her home, to abandon us, her family. She betrayed my trust and she betrayed yours, just as she betrayed the trust of the pony who she tricked into removing her pit buck, ensuring we could not find her. I know many of you are angry or hurt. I urge you to direct that anger where it truly belongs. As thankful as I was for her words, it wasn't going to change the resentment that I would face every day, even if every pony kept it to themselves. It hung in the air like old smoke. I distracted myself with the errant pit buck, taking note of an encrypted file. I had spotted it yesterday, figuring it was probably an unfinished new song. I didn't want to open it then, both out of my respect for Velvet Remedy's privacy and a dislike of spoilers. But I guess it didn't matter anymore. The song would never be played. Opening a pouch on my utility barding, I withdrew an access tool that would allow me to remove the encryption safely and easily. It was a sound file. I played it. The override code for opening the door to Sable 2 is CMC3BFF. I shot up in surprise at what I had heard. Swiftly, I turned off the radio and played it again. I didn't recognize the voice. It was female, kind of sweet, and had a strange accent that didn't sound like anyone in the stable. But now I knew how Velma randomly left. I must have sat there for hours, contemplating what I should do. But finally, I made my choice was going to go outside after her. I was going to bring her back. I stood there, staring at the huge steel door that sealed Staple 2 away from the horrors 
or nothingness, outside. And the two guard ponies who blocked the way. I had my saddlebags packed with apples and necessities. Even a big book of arcane sciences for something to read. I had two canteens around my neck. I was ready to go. But the Overmare was making sure there were no follow-up acts. Insistence and glowering looks weren't getting me anywhere. My horn was glowing, but they stood their ground, unimpressed. They weren't going to let me anywhere near the control panel. Hey, aren't you the filly who let our velvet get lost outside anyway? One of the guards inquired, daringly taking a bullying step forward. The other guard looked away in disgust. I'm not sure if he was disgusted at me, or if he felt like the Overmare seemed too concerned about ponies wanting to take it out on me. I was kind of hoping it was the former, considering what I was about to do to them. Thud. The metal footlock above them dropped onto their heads, knocking both out cold. Earth ponies. They never see that levitating something up behind you trick coming. I was at the controls, entering the passcode from Velvet Remedy's pit buck when the Overmare's voice boomed through the nearby speakers. Stop! I ordered you to stop this instant! Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Guards! I want every pony at Stable 2 door! Stop that filly! Oh, crap. My host flew up to the main switch for the door, and I prayed to Celestia that the code worked. Then, with all my strength, I threw the switch. A loud clanging filled the air, followed by a hissing of steam, and a great rumble that shook the room. As I watched, the massive bolt that held the door from Stable 2 shut slid back. A huge hinge arm swung down, attaching itself to the door, and with a teeth-hurting squeal, pulled the massive steel door out and away. Randomly, I found myself thinking in my mother's voice, Stable 2's barn door doesn't swing that way. The door to the stable wasn't supposed to open at all. Even though I threw the switch, I was stunned to see it actually open. You don't have to do this, little pip, isn't it? The Overmare's voice kicked me out of my stupor. I could hear the hooves of galloping guards drawing near. I took a step towards the door. Don't worry, I'll bring her back. No, you won't. If you leave here, you'll never be let back in. For a moment, the unfairness stung. The Overmare was willing to send out a search party to bring Velvet Remedy back. But then, Velvet was special. I was... not. Part of me wanted to turn back right there, crawl back to my room in my dreary but safe life. Drawing myself up, I stepped out the door. With a final hiss and clang, the steel door of Stable 2 closed irrevocably behind me. I don't know what I expected to find just beyond the door, but it certainly wasn't this long, dark hallway that smelled of rotting timbers and sepulchre air. It was no longer in the stable, but I wasn't outside yet either. I was in limbo. I turned on my pit buck light and recoiled with a gasp at the skeletons of long dead ponies which littered the hall. The outside of the stable door was marred from where ponies had slammed on until their hooves cracked and shattered, trying to get in. Moving forward quickly, I discovered that the hallway opened to an old room with stairs leading up to a horizontal door with a shattered lock. The entrance from the outside world into stable two had been cleverly disguised as the door to a humble apple cellar. And by disguise, I mean that the person who built it had been building an apple cellar. Taking a deep breath, I trotted up the stairs, swung open the cellar door, and stepped outside. Footnote. Level up. New perk. Cheshire La Philly. Plus 10% damage to the same sex and unique dialogue options with certain ponies.